So the next speaker is uh, Bill Stewart from MDA. He's a digital hardware engineer, and he will talk about MDA experience of Leon processors. So in this case, I will be sharing a single slide. Find it. So, Bill, are you on? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, uh, thank you. Um, I apologize, I don't have any uh, slides. Um, so they asked me to talk about our experiences with the GR740. So maybe I'll start with a, a bit of an intro uh, for those who don't know who MDA is. Um, MDA is uh, Canada's largest uh, space company. We've been in business for uh, more than 50 years. Um, we actually started under the RCM moniker back uh, way back when, when satellites were first being thrown on orbit and Canada was the third. Um, some of the things that we've done, the notable achievements include the, uh, the shuttle robotic system, the uh, International Space Station robotic system, RadarSat 1, RadarSat 2, um, and AMOS 5 and 6. Uh, we do the end-to-end -end, uh, of, of from you know, electronic software antennas to payloads and entire spacecraft. Um, <clears throat> So um, we first started with uh, Kaban products with uh, with the, the um, RadarSat Constellation mission, um, which has been on orbit for a few years. We started with the uh, UT699 processor in our uh, mass memory unit, and um, we have uh, six of those uh, currently on orbit. Um, from there, we moved on to the um, UT700, um, which is in our uh, Kolka, Kolka KA terminal on uh, on space station, and uh, recently we made the jump to the GR740 for uh, the Chorus um, synthetic aperture radar mission, which will be our third generation uh, or fourth generation of uh, SAR spacecraft. Um, <clears throat> so, in, in our application, um, it you know kind of fits most of what we've seen so far with the you know kind of standard thing with the SD RAM, 256 megabytes of SD RAM. Um, we're using a Cobham 8 megabyte uh, uh, MRAM with that, and and like many of the other solutions, we have an RTG4 uh, FPGA uh, companion to the, the GR740. Um, for this application, we selected the 740 um, mostly because of its high level of integration. Uh, for the SDRAM uh, RS EDAC, uh, we were looking for the more powerful EDAC for this application, the Spacefire router, the CAN bus, and the added performance that comes from the L2 cache. Um, we're actually only using it in a single core um, configuration. Um, we don't need the, um, the the performance of the four cores, and uh, the the single core performance offers so much more performance than the the original UT six nine nine series. Um, so uh, this product is being or this um, processor. We have two processor boards that we're developing uh, for that for the chorus mission. Uh, one is within our uh, mass memory unit, which will be a three terabit mass memory unit. So the processor is responsible for all of the communication with the spacecraft and managing the file system on the uh, the, the mass uh, storage flash. Um, it's also um, in within the payload computer, which is the master uh, computer for uh, orchestrating all the payload uh, operations. Um, so far, uh, things have been going pretty well for the processor, but uh, um, you know, I was asked to talk about the good and the bad and the ugly of of, of what we've been uh, working with the processor. And um, you know, the good I think is um, the user manual and the data sheet, and and uh, a lot of the cores inside the device are fairly easy to use. Having the CPU benchmarks was was kind of a benefit when we're evaluating different configurations and different uh, operating uh, speeds of the processor to determine what was the best uh, fit for us. Um, where we had some trouble was uh, developing um, in the the RMAP software drivers and stuff like that. It would have been really nice to have uh, some standard libraries that we could have could have uh, used for that. Um, and I think the um, GRLib uh, documentation could could use some work. Um, we also came up with a wish list of what we would like to see in our next generation in the next generation 765 for uh, our our next endeavor and. Um, one of the limitations of our current design is actually the PCI. The, the, the PCI performance is, is is a bottleneck in our design. It ends up being uh, uh, slowing down certain parts of the software while it has to wait for data to come back from the FPGA. And, and this is not really a function of the GR740 itself. It's kind of the PCI standard is when you're dealing with single accesses is not the most efficient bus to do that. So my biggest wish list for the 765 would be to have a low pin count 
bus between the 765 and an FPGA, the RTG4, obviously, um, which would allow us to do a transparent extension of the internal AHP buses of the 765 um, to an AHP bus inside of our inside the FPGA. We like the GR740. Um, we are we use AMBA AHP buses pretty much everywhere in our FPGA designs, um, and we have standard modules and everything that we plug off of that. Um, another feature that would be uh, nice to see in the 765 is the uh, for the SD RAM controller to uh, automatically issue the MRS to the SDRAM because we know that that does mitigate certain types of Cephe with uh, with SDRAM. So it would be nice if if the 765 could do that in its uh, in its controller. Um, and then one thing we're we're currently working on with the 740 is how best to handle the L2 cache and scrubbing it and so forth so that we uh, scrub out the errors that were occur during the mission. And I think my understanding right now is with the 740 cache, we have no choice but to invalidate the whole cache. It would it would have been uh, good to have a, a line by line cache invalidation, like it's available in PowerPC type devices that allow us to have a minimal performance impact while we uh, scrub and uh, deal with the cache and make sure that it maintains coherency with with uh, with single event upsets. And yeah, that's that's about all I have to say.